Amy. Hey, Jack. I'm gay. Oh my god, that is so funny. I'm also gay. I was uh, gonna tell you. Wait, really? Yeah. And, and you're, you're listening, listening to Dating Straight. Hey, Amy. Hi, Jack. Hey, my holla. Hi, Jack. Hi, Amy. <laughs> uh, I am Girl. so, so glad that you are here today. Um, for those of you who don't know my holla, um, she is the star of the Literally. HBO show Industry. <laughs> um, among other things, she has been on the Book of Mormon tour and is just a friend um, of mine and um, our good friend Carson. And that's how we know each other. So we're so excited to have you today. It's my pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. I was so excited to do this with you guys. <laughs> oh. Mayala, I just finished Industry and I was texting da- Jack throughout it. I have seen you literally bone. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Is that like so crazy to think So many people I've seen you just literally like getting railed. Oh my god! (laughs) Um, I don't know. I don't know. I um, I in retrospect, yeah, for sure. But like, I don't know. I guess I, I guess I just wasn't worried about that part of it. I guess I, I was just like more excited to be about like a part of the conversation of um, the conversation around how we portray and view sex and 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 bodies in intimacy and having sex, but it, uh, definitely one of the first questions, like just right now that people ask me all the time is like, what did your mom say? Like, <laughs> oh my God. Uh, oh. And I was like, what did your mom say? Well, honestly, I think this is just like the kind of person I am. She was like, uh, I had, I expected nothing less. Like I knew this was going to happen at some point, <laughs> you know, um, not to say that I'm fast and loose, but like, she just was like, <laughs> <laughs> she's just like, wow. I just, I just said that about myself. Nobody even said that. I just said that. Like, um, <laughs> oh, I'm some sweat. Um, <laughs> uh, no, nah, no, nah, she was really supportive. And the, the interesting thing about, I mean, it's not like she, she skipped a lot of that, but it was interesting. She was like, I started to watch a little bit of it and it didn't even, it wasn't, it wasn't you, you know, it wasn't like my right. holla doing this thing. Right. It was Harper right. doing this thing. So it's a little bit different. Um, but yeah, some a lot of my friends, my best friend from home, Allie, was like, you look so hot. You're amazing. <laughs> I watched that shit so many times. Oh, my, <laughs> oh my God. God. <laughs> that's that my girl. So She's bold. like, you're killing it. <laughs> wow. That's I awesome. guess that's like the upgraded version of like sending your friends nudes to like hype you up. You know what I mean? It's right, like right. send them that scene. Literally, <laughs> literally. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I will say well, I was only like slightly worried that some of those scenes from the show, like mine and, and everyone else's were like going to end up in other places on the internet. And I was like, this is just something I have uh, to accept as possible. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> as a, as a, as a star, as a star, <laughs> Like that's, I guess that's just something you unfortunately have to, that comes with the territory. And has it gone anywhere? Like, have you researched anything like that? And like, that I know how do you feel about of, that? No, I mean, okay. I, it's out there, period. You know, right. if you don't have an HBO right. subscription, I guess you can find it somewhere else. But like, no, I'm not worried about it. I'm, I'm an actor and I, I did, I, I have a lot of, a lot of pride in the work that I did and the way that I did it. So, and I do, I mean, I'm not going to cap on myself. I look amazing. So I'm not mad about it. (laughs) Yeah, you do. You do. Oh my God. (laughs) Yeah. Actually, I was watching industry, um, on my like family TV Mm. and during a sex scene my mom like walks in and she's like, Ooh, what's going on? (laughs) I was like, Oh my God. That's (laughs) scary. I love Um, that for her. Um, it was really fun. That show was so damn good. Some of it did just go straight over my head. I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. But I could certainly tell that, like, you you did some, oh, Hoppe did something. She, like, fucked up some big, I don't, no spoilers. No spoilers. Sorry, Amy. sorry. But I, I wasn't really <laughs> getting what you were saying, but I, I could tell that you were stressed. Right. Well, that's the, that's the only <laughs> right. thing I didn't know what I was talking about or doing right, uh, right. but I did know that I was very stressed and that's universal you know <laughs> you don't have to know shit right. about finances stress. to know what stress looks like <laughs> shot, right shot. right and also I don't think I've ever seen a character like Harper 
on TV mm. before. Should we should we quickly explain for those who haven't seen? Oh yeah, can you tell like? Us can what you give us a synopsis about? of what you would say your character is like and like what the show is about? Yeah, absolutely. So, industry follows a group of young recent graduates who get hired at um, it, uh, entry level positions at one of the top banks um, in London, um, and they have like the investment banking division and the cross product sales division, the foreign exchange, whatever. And so you follow um, like a handful of main characters who are these young graduates. Um, and I play a character named Harper. She's a New Yorker who gets hired at this entry level position thing. And she's the only American like in her, her class of people. Um, and you're just, you just follow these, these young adults like navigating what it likes what it's like to be at the bottom of the food chain at this like massive hierarchical corporate institution and it's like them versus the you know workings of the bank and and oh, oh here this is important um the whole of the series is is them like i don't know how long it is six months or however long um them they find out at the end of their sort of session, like whether or not they're going to be hired full time. So they're essentially just like fighting to stake their claim to be hired by the manager on their desk, whatever that might be. So, um, my character, she's from New York and she's got a lot of secrets and, um, Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good way to put it for no yeah. spoilers. <laughs> she's got a lot of secrets, um, that she's fighting very hard to, not exposed because she's afraid it's going to, you know, risk her, her entire job and opportunity. And if she doesn't have this job, that means X, Y, and Z. But really the show is just about relationships, about what it's like to be like leaving school, entering the workforce and being at the bottom of the damn food chain and like just flailing and like throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. And of course they're young people and they're in finance. So like sex, drugs, and an insane amount of money. And that's what makes it like crazy. Cause you know, all of us are like, oh, yeah, it's stressful, like entering a job. But then you add like millions of dollars on the line all the time. And then right. it's like, you know, crazy. Yeah. It's and it's really good. So much <laughs> more. You. I mean, like there are so many like subtle and not so subtle like conversations about like sexism in the workplace, right. racism in the workplace, drugs, drug use. And like, oh, my God, it tackles. I feel like like every like identity, gay, there's queer characters and like, like every sort of identity. Oh, and like sexual, um, exploration, like, mm -hmm. no, well, exploration, <laughs> but also like exploitation. Oh, right. Um, right, right, right. It really like covers the whole yeah. bandwagon of like how fucked up, like these large structures of mm -hmm. our world are that like we don't see. It's right. a really interesting look at just like finance. Cause I feel like I don't know. I feel like we probably all are this way when someone's like, I work in finance. It's like, okay, <laughs> what is yeah, that? Exactly. What is but that now mean? I that kind of nothing. feel like I know a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I certainly didn't know anything about the world of finance and I'm, I'm not going to claim that I do know a lot now because I really just honestly don't. And that's okay because I'm just an actor. Um, <laughs> but I like what you said about the show that it like, you know, tackles all these like big, big, um, thematic Mental health. issues yeah uh, across the board but mm -hmm. but I think like what connected me to this show and to the to the finance bit of it because I don't know finance is that like all of the like emotional and relationship things that these people go through like it's just set in a bank but all of those types of relationships and like trials and tribulations that they go through are things that I can directly relate to being like a young person who graduated and then moved to New York and was just like let me start my life you know what I mean um, yeah. It's a different scale, but I think that's what makes it relatable. Like everyone has been that person at the bottom of the food chain at work and like clinging to some, how do I get to the top or how do I get success or, you know what I mean? And then all the, right. all the shit that comes in between all of that. And I actually wanted to ask you, I feel like that is perfect, a perfect segue that you brought up is like, that was you. You were a recent, recent graduate. You just graduated with our friend Carson in the yeah. same graduating class. Um, and then, like, pretty much immediately booked this, like, literally the star of an HBO show. Yeah. What the <laughs> hell? Like, how was that for you? And, like, what 
how are you feeling? What was that like emotionally? Mm-hmm. Like how I don't know. I just want to I just want to celebrate this? you a little bit. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Um so we shot in from June of 2019 through December. So we were uh, a pre-pandemic moment which was so wow. not I feel so bad for anyone who was in the middle of production or in the middle of anything really, you know, but we had finished. Right. Um but yeah, I uh <laughs> It, it was like such a whirlwind. Like I got, it felt like I auditioned, uh, had the audition process and then booked this show like within a matter of mere weeks. It, it seemed like it happened so quickly and then it started so quickly. And I think like, I understood that I was, you know, leading this show and um, it's a big, but like a high profile situation with HBO and BBC and um there was also so much responsibility that I acknowledged and and happily took on knowing that I was going to be one of the very few, if not the only like young black woman leading a finance drama. Yeah. Like I don't think that exists before we did it. So I understood like the impact that that potentially had. And I was so excited, like so grateful that I was going to be able to have that, to be able to do that. Um, But honestly, I was like, let me work. Let's go. Like, I've been grinding, kicking my own ass in New York for nine months. I'm ready to work. Um, And I think just because I was so excited about the project and I just, like, had to do it. I didn't have an option. Like, I'm an experience, but, like, I still have to do this. I still have to show up to work every day and, like, be amazing. That I didn't really give myself the opportunity to, like, genuinely feel the weight and the gravity of the thing. Because I think if I had dwelled on that for too long... I would not have been able to make it through the six months of the shoot. Um, wow. Uh, but it was really cool. Actually, on the day that we wrapped, um, you know, we had a we had a wrap party. We finished. We, like, partied for at, forever. There was an afters at mine. And then once everyone left, like, I'm, like, I was like, bye, I'll miss you. I love you. Like, I was leaving back for the States the next day. Closed the door. And I was like, mm-hmm. ah, that was great. Turned around. And then literally uh, burst into tears and fell on the floor and was like, oh, unconsolable oh. for like, I cried myself to sleep. Like I don't even remember the night. My oh, castmate, oh my it was God. crazy. It was insane. My castmate, Marisa, who plays Yasmin had to come over. Like I tried to walk and meet her. She met me halfway and then carried me back to my apartment, like brushed my teeth for oh. me and put me to bed because I was oh. weeping. And I think because oh. it was over, then I gave myself the permission to like feel what the fuck just happened to me for six months, you know? Um, right. And then it all sort of settled and, and then, of course, it was almost a year before the show came out. So there's so much time for me to like, like, was that even real? I don't know. And then when it came out, I was like, oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> it was well, real. Like, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> remember that time? Yeah, definitely. It was, wow. it was, it was crazy. And I mean, I just feel so, I'm like flooded, flooded with, with pride, like that I got to do that. And like, I'm so grateful for the opportunity and the impact that it's had on so many people, like so many young black people in finance have been like, Hey, thanks for that. And that's like more than I could ever ask for, you know? Wow. That's so awesome. <laughs> You're a rock star. You are a rock star. <laughs> I am so proud to know you. Oh like God. truly. Oh. I think you're so awesome. Thank you, Jack. I could, I could tear up oh a little my bit, God. but Don't. no, I mean, it's just Sweet fun. It's just so cool to like see someone, you know, that you know and just like have so much success doing oh, what they love. Thank like, you. I don't know. That's so, so Yeah, nice. somebody that I went to um, the Abbey with that one time <laughs> is now <That's> me. <laughs> is now a podcast sensation. The feelings oh, are mutual. Sensation. Absolutely mutual. <laughs> Such a pleasure to know you as well. Oh my gosh. Um, I did want to ask you, um, well, First of all, yeah. season two, <gasps> it's, we've been renewed. We've Whoa. been picked up, ladies and gents. <laughs> um, so catch up now, season one, if you haven't. Yeah. Um, what Do you know when that's going to take place? And like, or maybe that's secret. I don't know what's like NDA. <laughs> um, but, but if I had are any, you prepared for that? Well, am I prepared? Yes. Uh, do I know what's happening? No, I have no clue. Right. All I know is that we are going back to start shooting in July. 
of this year, of 2021. Um, I don't know when that means it will be released. I assume that they'll try to do it on the same sort of track. So it'll come out, you know, like November ish, but I have no idea. I have no clue, but I am super excited to go back. I I cannot wait. Ah. What was that like, like wrapping this huge HBO show and then coming back here and then immediately going into (laughs) lockdown? Yeah, (laughs) that's that like. Um, it, uh, depressing it was weird I mean right, like right actually the lockdown was kind of a like a kind of a I don't know masochistic reprieve because when I got back I was previously living in Brooklyn with a bunch of my friends and then I moved when I came back from industry I moved to Manhattan so I was like let me try my hand at Manhattan I'll be a little closer to auditions and I'm I'm not planning on being here long like I'm gonna book a job I'm gonna go work uh, and that's certainly not what happened. Um, but in the first couple of right. months, like I just wasn't, I wasn't auditioning very much and I was really far away from my friends and in a new neighborhood. And mm-hmm. of course, like you do this big project and it's like the best thing that's ever happened to you. And it's your whole life and you have this vigorous ass schedule and then you come back and you have nothing, zero plans, nobody around, just nothing. And that was like definitely a massive shock to my system. So I was like mad depressed for like a month. And then I was sort of, oh, I'm going to be okay, like explore my neighborhood. And then they were like locked down. And I was like, this is kind of amazing because now Uh, like I've been doing this. I've been locked down just by accident. But now I don't feel like guilty or any kind of responsibility to like make a life for myself. That sounds so pitiful. But honestly, that's a little bit how I felt for the first like two months. Um, But, you know, it was what it was. Everyone is everyone's going through lockdown at the same time. um, So. But I'm actually, I'm very much a homebody. I'm very good at being by myself. And um, my cat salad was with me, which was amazing. She's my best pal. She did just pass away a few days ago, which was devastating. But um, she was with me through the whole thing. And so we just, we bonded, we played and we did, you know, whatever we did for hours upon hours over the course of seven months. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Right, right. I didn't mind it though. I didn't mind it. How did you guys like lockdown? No, 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 no. Like, no. <laughs> I love. Like, how do I love lockdown? Um, well, you ended up having like a oh, good time when you went to New York. Yeah, I, I was in New York. I know. A little bit. We missed each other. Um, that is crazy. I know. We just missed each other. Um, were you in California during that time? No. Where you no, were. I was. I was in New York, but I also I did I did I did work a little bit during the pandemic. Towards the end of it, I shot in Syracuse on this movie called Plan B that is also coming out this year, which is cool. I played a cool. lesbian drummer, which is very cool. <gasps> Wait, Whoa, hold that's my on. Type, oh, hold shit, you're going to lose on. your mind when hold you see this. Yes. Oh, yeah. Plan B. I didn't know that you had a lesbian <laughs> experience material <laughs> in your repertoire. Listen, <laughs> listen. I, I've got things up my sleeve, bro. Oh. <laughs> Wait. What does that mean? Uh, I'm full of surprises. But yeah, no, I played a, I, um, a lesbian drummer, which was cool, for like two weeks in Syracuse. And I think part of some, I don't know how long you were there, but sometime you were there, I was like, I had to quarantine and all that. And I was away for a little bit. Um, but yeah, I right, think we just right. missed each other. Yeah, I was, was only there for a couple months. But. During pandemic. Uh, like. You know, it it was like... Uh, it was interesting. I mean, uh, the only thing that was like different besides, okay, so we got COVID tested like every other day and everyone on set was masked up all the time. Um, we had to wear these like shields, like we had to come with masks. And then once we got in hair and makeup and costume, we just wore shields. So we, the actors were the only ones who were ever unmasked. I think the the weirdest part is if we ever had extras on set, they would all be masked and then they'd be like, all right, action and take your mask off. And then like, you know, however many people in a room, like 50 whoever's just people just like take their masks off. And that was the first time that I was around anyone that was like not my crew without a mask on. Wow. So that was a little bit weird, but, but I was like, okay, we're rolling. Like I have to do my job. <laughs> I have to drum it now. together. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Now I have to drum. Um, but it was good. Yeah. It was, it was, it was I fine. have to I, kiss women. I, <laughs> Whoa. Uh, Lesbians, that's what you do. So do you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, what was that like? Like, how do you channel like sexuality on camera? And how do you like 
prep that and like figure out like how to play that part, I guess. Um, lesbian research. Yeah. What was well, the lesbian I mean, research? I didn't have to do lesbian research exactly. Um, I bat for lots of teams. So that was not something that was like difficult for me. But um, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> but uh, mostly, mostly like um, now, what's becoming the norm now, which was, has not been the case forever. Um, uh, we have what's called an intimacy coordinator. So it's literally a person whose only job is to coordinate, stage, facilitate, uh, uh, you know, manage and oversee all the things that are intimate on screen. So they would come ahead of time. I would meet with the person I was doing an intimate scene with. They would come and they'd be like, you know, we would talk about like, okay, boundaries and consent. Like, what am I, what, uh, what, uh, what am I okay with? Uh, being seen on screen like some people like okay um from chest up is all good but from from like mid waist down I don't want that on camera or like even as specific as I don't want pubic hair being seen or or you know um but there's all kinds of like tricks as well if you're doing like a nipple suck like there's they teach you a way to do it so that it looks like you're doing it but you're not actually like there's no skin on skin contact of any kind so in industry um because there was all kinds of very close contact (laughs) um we wore what's called a merkin oh my god a merkin is this (laughs) silicone vagina essentially like a you know the shape of a a pad like a hygiene a pad a period pad thing it's like that shape but it has it's like you know an imprint of a vagina it's got pubic hair and everything like around the front and they just laid it on on you like up and then around the front and then up the back like between your butt cheeks and then glued the edges and it was they they color matched it to match my skin this was really nuts because wow. then I would like look at myself and I thought I was, I was clearly looking at a vagina that was looking like it was attached to my body, but it was like not my vagina. Super weird. Wow. Um, but those are really great yeah, because it, literally, well, that's really literally, yeah. um, that was really great because then you're fully covered. There's zero skin to skin contact. There's a little, you know, cushion in case there's any sort of uh, friction or, or touching and so you're fully protected. And then the men wore a similar thing, but it was just a, a prosthetic penis that just goes over top oh of their own God. one. Wow. Which is wow. crazy. Wow. There were lots of dicks in that show, mm-hmm. too. So are, were all dicks prosthetic? <laughs> I probably can't ask you that. <laughs> yes. No, um, no, they were. All of them. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Wow. They look so they real. They look so real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shout out Shout out to our, our art department. Shout out to the makeup team. They were... Chef's kiss on the prosthetics. Wow. Intimacy artist. Intimate, yes. Yes. Intimacy artist coordinator. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Is that prepping. Like very uncomfy. The Merkin. Like to take it off. Yeah. Yeah. They use I like. I can't imagine. You know that spirit glue stuff that you'd like, you know, put on your face if you're putting on like a fake beard for Halloween? I don't know why I just said that, but like spirit glue. <laughs> it's like. Yeah. A, it's well, like a it is a wig. Yeah. Or, or yeah, for right. so it was that similar thing, and you can't go to the bathroom while it's on. So we'd be shooting, you know, four or five hours. Um, what? Yeah. Whoa! What getting, wait, that really, seems really like that to. seems like. Yeah. Well, there was one that time that I like really a lot of pressure. It was definitely a lot of pressure. It was definitely. I mean, one time I just said to them, I was like, water. I have to go. Like, there's no. I just have to. I have to go to the bathroom, and then took a like took a little took a little section off opened it up, right. peed, and then, like, <laughs> glued it back oh on. <laughs> Nothing no about was... sex on screen is sexy or cute. Like, none of it. Right. None of it. It's all very wow. technical. So we hear. I want to speak to whose job that is, is to make those. Right? right. <laughs> you want to make muckins? <laughs> I don't think I want to make one. I just want to speak to someone who does. Um, okay. So, um, so... Obviously, being on the big screen, also being, you know, sexy on the big screen. Um, what are, like, some of the audience's reactions? Maybe, like, DMs you've gotten. Like, what are the fans saying? What are the men saying who <laughs> want you? Or women. True. Um, um, have you gotten any interesting, like, love notes or anything like that? Yeah, definitely. I've gotten 
I've gotten a, 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 a cross, a, 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 a all ends, all points of the spectrum DMs. Lots of really nice. kind, just like, I love the show, congratulations. Or like, um, uh, my favorite ones are people who are like, I really appreciate like your portrayal of this. I really appreciate the story. I felt really seen. It's, those are the best ones. I've also gotten some um, uh, messages asking me um, if I have anyone sponsoring my pedicures <laughs> uh, or um, I think it was the same person who sent me the same message multiple times saying, um, I have a question. Um, please answer it. It's important. I just want to know, like, do you like your feet rubbed or are your feet ticklish? It's important. Please don't be mad. Uh, <laughs> please don't be mad. <laughs> please don't be mad. It's important. I'm asking for a reason. I'm like, I know, I know you're asking for a reason. Um, so that, <laughs> that's been pretty weird. And then some other, some other mildly questionable ones, like, do you really date bankers? So you do date bankers. Like, let me take you out. You're so hot. Ooh. Wow. Yes. Yeah. All the bankers are like, oh my God, this is awesome for me. <laughs> right. Yeah, um, people asking and me where I live. Do you date bankers? <laughs> do, do I? I'd like to say, yeah, being like, oh, one of one message I got. This guy was like, I think I just saw, I just saw you at my favorite coffee shop. Like, maybe come back. And I was like, oh, oh my god, what the? But it said it was some some name of some place that I certainly have never been to. So I don't know if it was like <laughs> okay. a ploy right, right. or like I don't know. Um, hmm. Yeah, I guess I would. I would. I'm, I'd like to say I wouldn't discriminate against bankers. I'm not really sure if but. I ever find myself in that situation. <laughs> uh, but they do seem a little intense, right, don't they? Yeah. Right. Not sure if I could keep up. Like, real life Mahala can't keep up with the life of a financier. I just can't. Right, right. Or at least what wow. I know of them. <laughs> right. Um, well, that sounds fun. What other, also sounds fun is that you were on the Book of Mormon tour. <laughs> so sick. Um... Please tell us a little bit about that. Like, what were you up to? What was that like? Sure. Yeah. So I got cast in the second national tour of Book of Mormon in 2017 over the summer. Um, and I was actually just filling out another girl's contract. She, Somebody was leaving the show and the current girl was going to go replace this. Uh, someone else is leaving the show. I think a bunch of people got pregnant at the same time. Like three of the Navalungis oh. all got pregnant within like months of each other. So they all had to go. Um, so they were like, yeah. <laughs> oh, not go, but like, you know, go have their baby. Like, <laughs> Get them out that of That sounded here. crazy. That's not how I meant that. <laughs> um, but anyway, there was a position to like fill out the rest of this girl's contract. It was like four and a half months. And they asked me to do it. It was perfect. It was right before I went back to school for my last year at Carnegie Mellon. Um, so I did that and it was touring. Um, it was crazy. It was my first, like my first big job, my first traveling job. Um, my first like leading role that I was getting paid to do. Um, it was amazing. I st opened at the Pantages in LA. I started there. I think I was there for like a week. You should have gone. <laughs> no, it was so close by, um, there for a week. And then I went straight to San Jose, which was my hometown. And so I essentially opened like in my hometown, which was both equally cool and amazing and also like super annoying and scary and weird. Um, annoying? How so? Uh, I don't know. It's just like, you know, uh, people that like I went to school with who were like, oh my God, like I heard you in the night, who was like, they were like not friends with me and not nice to me. And like suddenly like right. acting like uh, we were friends. That was kind of weird. Like I didn't, I didn't enjoy that. I was like, do not right. like, keep the same energy. <laughs> so that was right, kind of right. weird. <laughs> that was kind of weird. Um, but it was nice being home and like I was, you know, filled with love and appreciation. And I, I got to do this crazy, amazing first job with my friends and family all there to watch. So that was really sick. And then we went to San Diego and which was cool. Oh. Carson came to see me in San Diego. He came to see a show, um, which was amazing. Um, and then I think I went two other places, but the one place that I do remember. And you were going, like, keep the same energy, <laughs> my friend. Don't do not. <laughs> yeah, I was like, same energy. Um, uh, then I played in in Salt Lake, Salt Lake City, which was cool because um, the character that, that I. Home. Yeah, right. The character that I played, right. Navalungi, talked about Salt Lake City, and she has this whole song called Salt Lake City. And um, this brand new theater that they built that we were playing in was like the most 
insane, like grand thing I'd ever seen. And we were doing a light test before we opened and it was my song. And then the whole like top of the theater went like completely black, the ceiling and everything. Oh, yeah. And then like the music flurried and I sang this high note and I looked up and the ceiling turned into stars. Like they had like the night sky in this theater. It was so majestic. Whoa. It was amazing. And then when I did it for real... You have being... a magical voice is what it sounds like. I don't <laughs> think that was the theater. I think that was just magic. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, when I... <laughs> right, me. Hmm. Same energy. <laughs> um, yeah, when I did it, then the the crowd was like screaming and like going crazy. And I wasn't sure how it was going to be because that's like Mormon country, you know. But it was really cool. They were actually right. the most enthusiastic audience. And that was like anytime they come to that place because it's like half Mormons and half not Mormons and the half not Mormons love the show. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> what, do, what do the Mormons think of the show? I wonder. Uh, they probably don't I, go. Right. Well, they yeah. Never heard of it. <laughs> Some of them don't. Actually, a, a friend of mine from tour, he was Mormon and his whole family is Mormon. Oh. Um, oh. Yeah, wild. Um, well, not anymore. Lots of lots of his family has left the church, but some of them, many of them still are. Um, so, and he grew up in Utah. Like, he's from Utah. Um, so when we went there, it was really interesting because his family came to see the show and I was like, how do y'all feel about this? <laughs> um, yeah. And they were like, we think it's, you know, it's a great show. It's all in good fun. Like, you know, it's a lot of it is, you know, birthed from some sort of truth, but it's fun and you make light of it and whatever and you go on and it's a great show. And then there's other people who were like, yeah. like Mormons who are stationed outside of the theater, like handing out pamphlets, like, would you like to know more about <coughs> the, oh, the, so it was like an ad. Yeah, literally, right. literally. Right. And they even buy ads in the programs of the theater. No, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What? Like, do you really want to learn more about the, I don't know what they I book. I wonder a, if that works for them. <sighs> I mean. They're spending money I on it, so know. it must be some kind of worth it. I don't know. I don't right. know. It was very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, tell us a little bit about, like, being on the road mm. and, Dating. I know you said that you weren't uh, the most daty, daty <laughs> one of them all, but like, no. I feel like there's a lot of opportunity there. Right. Absolutely. I mean, the joy of being on tour is you're never in a, in one place for too long. Um, uh-huh. So it's a pretty pretty low stakes, low risk, low commitment situation. So from what <laughs> right. I had heard. Um, Not from personal experience, but from what I had heard, there was, you know, you go out and you can just meet people and have a good time. And Or if you happen to be sitting down in a city for, you know, six weeks, like when they did L.A. and they were there for six weeks, you're like, okay, I got my I got my sit down boo for the six weeks, um, which is, you know, yeah, an L.A. (laughs) boo. Or if they like came back to a city that someone on the tour had already been, they'd already have their L.A. boo and they got their Utah boo and they're, you know. Oh my I, god! Yeah. <laughs> I was um, watching from the sidelines, but but definitely entertaining and a great way to meet people to go around and you know because you're you're not yeah. staying, which is nice. I want to have booze around the globe. You what do? the hell? I mean, who doesn't? Okay. Right? Come I on. don't. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, why not? <laughs> I'm jealous. Okay. Okay. So we also know that you have a current boo. Is he still behind you? We can't really see. Yeah, he is. He is? Yeah. Napping behind you? Yeah. Um, and how did you guys meet? Um, you, uh, believe it or not, Instagram. Um, it goes down in the DMs. Yeah, it fully officially. went down. Yeah, officially. In the DMs, yeah. Um, when the show came out, I uh, was, you know, getting messages from nice people just saying congratulations. And um, I was doing my best to be gracious and respond like, thank you to, to most messages, except the ones about my my pedicure. I just didn't think that <laughs> was appropriate. Yeah, you just um, send him a Venmo request. That's free, all yeah, it you need. Thank you. I know. I mean, I could have, yeah, but then like there's a commitment there and like, ah. Um, yeah. Right. <laughs> you make your own money, girl. You don't right. need that. Right. Like HBO money. <laughs> HBO is sponsoring my pedicures. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, was responding thank you to a bunch of DMs and then there was one in there I that said like, congrats on the show, like which wish you lots of success in life or something with like heart, I think. And I said, thank you. And I think 
either later that day or the next day, I got a message from the same person. And I was like, it was a video message. And I was like, oh, God, it's a dick. Like, I really, oh, no. <laughs> I was like, damn it. Like, I thought this was going to be chill. Right. But, of course, my curiosity got the, the best of me. And I was like, okay, let me, let me, yeah. let me watch this. Um, and it was <laughs> <laughs> this guy um, being like, hey, thanks so much for responding to my message. Um, that's really cool. Again, like, congrats on the show. You're really great. Um, I shot in the dark, but I just wanted to see if maybe you were available and willing to do this interview with me. I have this project. Um, it's a celebrity profile. And I was like, celebrity? Who is me? What is that? <laughs> I don't, I don't feel like I qualify as a celebrity, but okay. Um, and he was like, if you're available, it's, you know, I don't want, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Or if you just want to like answer the questions and send them to me, whatever. And I actually happened to be with Carson when I got that message. Um, mm. and I, and I he he why. always <laughs> right. Well, he al- always say, "Do it, yeah, yeah just literally, live a little." <laughs> <laughs> literally, I was like, "This guy just asked me to do an interview for this project of his," and he was like, "Oh my gosh, that's so nice! You should totally do it, definitely do it." Yeah. I was like, "Yeah, okay." I mean, yeah. Well, there's no right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll do it. And I didn't. I thought about okay, like if I was like you know shot in the dark, let me reach out and see what happens. It would be nice if that person responded to me. So I was like, "Yeah, okay, I'll do it." So I did. I was like, yeah, I have some time tomorrow. You want to hop on a Zoom? Um, and we did. And um, we like hop on this Zoom. <laughs> and <laughs> and almost turns out he's a hot. <laughs> like, yeah, what? turns Sorry. out he's stunning. Um, but I literally <laughs> was like getting all this energy through the Zoom. And I was like sweating. And I was like, what is happening to me right now? Like, is this like, I don't really, it was just kind of strange. And we ended up talking for a very long time. And um He was like asking me really engaging questions like about my life and about myself and how I felt about things that were happening to me. And um, I don't know, I felt very seen. And then of course we like hang up and I was like, that was an alternate universe. Like what, what the hell was that? I'm still sweating. (laughs) Um, And then it just was over, you know, I was like, okay, well that was just like a moment. And then I don't know, a few days later or something, we exchanged some more messages Um, I think I posted something that he liked and he was like, this is cool. And um, I don't know, like a week later, I was like, hmm, I wonder how this guy's doing. So I sent him a message about his project. I was like, did you get an A on your project? Ah! (laughs) Like a total nerd. Like, so I was like, let me just see, like, if there's some energy here. Maybe it's just me. But if if it isn't, like, why not go for it? Um, and then we just mm-hmm. sort of ended up talking. We were, like, talking every day for weeks over Instagram. Over Instagram, mind you. Um, right. Like, g- graduating into, like, voice memos and video messages and mm. things like that. Yeah. Um, and then, like, three weeks in, he asked me for my phone number. Um, we had a little FaceTime date, which was really nice. Wow. Um, yeah. uh, and then, like... I don't know, two weeks of FaceTiming like every day, I happened to be going home to California. Um, and he goes to school in San Francisco. Um, so I drove from San Jose to San Francisco to like meet him in person, um, which is crazy. It was so, Were you so nervous. So I was I was so nervous. I mean, well, I wasn't I wasn't like nervous. I was I was excited, you know, but I was like, this could go right, literally right. any way. Like right. we don't know each other. We don't, you know, um, But literally, I was like, I'm in love with you instantly. Like, I just was like, yep, you're amazing. (laughs) Um, Wow. (laughs) Yeah. When you know, you know. When you know, you just know. Um, And we spent, like, every weekend together for, like, a month. Um, And I'm, yep, I'm very, very, very much in love with him. (gasps) Wow. (laughs) You literally are dating a fan. Like, you... (laughs) I feel like we all have those like ideas in our head. Like sometimes I'll be like watching some right. movies or something and I'd be like, oh, I could never like I would love to, but I would never be able to get, you know, um, what's his name? Bradley Cooper. <laughs> and Bradley Cooper. but maybe I just haven't sent him a DM. Yes, you should just do a, a school project on it. Right. Yeah. 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 Yes. Just make sure that you say, like, I have this project, it's due. <laughs> Like, you know, whatever it's due for school. And then, you know, right. they're, they're, I imagine they're more likely to respond in kind. Um, yeah, right. it is kind I have of this crazy. project. It's called this podcast. It's and <laughs> I need you on it. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. 
Um, that is so exciting. Yeah. How has that been dating like long distance? Um, you know, I I have sort of found myself in a couple of long distance ish situations oh. before. Um, like when I left for college, I was dating somebody, and before I left for industry, I was dating somebody. Um, so I'm not. This is not like new to me. But the thing that I always okay. maintained was like. If I, if my personhood, if my like heart and my soul are fulfilled, then like, I'm not worried about not being next to them. And like, thank God for FaceTime. Otherwise I might be a wreck, but like, or like sending, (laughs) sending letters. Maybe I might be doing that. Um, (laughs) But yeah, I don't know. I don't, I mean, it sucks to be away from each other to like not be able to like hold each other and like, you know, hold hands and like touch faces or whatever. But like, I feel very much fulfilled um, by conversation and, and, um, knowing I have the other person's support and we're like on the phone all the damn time anyway. So, um, I don't ever feel like I'm without him, which is nice. Um, but we haven't been apart for like, (laughs) thanks. We haven't been apart for like a a, a lengthy amount of time just yet. So, um, I don't know how I'm going to feel, but it's like the longest that we've been apart. Yeah. Um, since we, since we, Oh, let's see. Since we met, I guess two weeks. Oh, whoa. Easy. Okay, this is not long Too distance easy. relationship. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's just a relationship. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. This is just, yeah, um, two weeks. But when I go back to film industry or if I'm filming, like I'm, I'm going to start a new project in, in um, late April that goes for like a month and a week or something like that, um, then we will be apart for a very long time. And right. I don't know what that's going to feel like, but I imagine I will. Would he go with you to Wales? Um, uh, he, he won't stay with me, but he has, he has expressed a desire to visit for sure. Ooh. That's so funny. <laughs> your life, I feel like you just have like the world at your feet in oh. all areas. Oh. Dating, work, <laughs> being hot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'm feeling. What more could we want? I don't know, man. I feeling I I feel very much like I want for not. I feel very very blessed, very lucky. Um very much in my bag, which is nice. Um <laughs> so, you know what? I do have a question about the bag actually. Mm. I wanted to ask what's like the most fun thing you've bought with oh, HBO's oh funds, you know? Like what uh the most fun thing that I've purchased with it. Okay. Uh, um, okay. <laughs> um, to celebrate my like first big job, I uh, got a boat, a houseboat, an Airbnb. What? Wait, what? I, like, oh, not bought it. Oh. I don't have oh. a houseboat. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no I, I got an Airbnb houseboat in Paris. Uh, for Whoa. New Year's for five days, and I flew out my mother, my best friend from California, oh um, and then my two friends from three three friends of mine from Brooklyn from school um, came to Paris, and we just like partied fucking hard with my mom for a week oh on a boat, God. and I paid for the whole thing. So that was probably the That's most fun. Amazing. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, it was it was amazing, and it was nice, a celebratory thing, like. I had just finished this big job and I had been away for so long and we, we always wanted to travel and none of us had ever done that and never been to Paris. Like I think two, yeah. two of the two of us, three of us had never been out of the States before. So uh, it was really special wow. to be able to like treat my family like that, you know, like to be able to be like, That's just crazy. come to the boat. I'll take care of everything. That was pretty, <laughs> that was pretty sick. Get to the boat and it, and don't worry about it. Right. Yeah. Get to the boat. Was the- was going to Wales the first time you had left America? Mm-hmm. Yeah. First damn wow. on my... Wait, really? Yeah, literally. That's so yeah. freaking awesome. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, it was really cool. Like, it didn't even really, like, hit me what, what was happening to me until I got there. And then I was like, oh, my God, everything's backwards here. Or maybe frontwards, and I'm doing it backwards. I don't know. Um, what was, like, the biggest thing that was different that you had to adjust to? Mm-hmm. Uh, Welsh folk are mad friendly, like way friendly, more friendly than I I was like, why are they so, why are they so genuinely interested in like how my day is? 
that is weird to me. Like, how dare I, they? <laughs> literally. They were like, I'd get in a cab and they'd be like, oh, how are you? Like, where are you going? What are you doing today? Oh, where are you from? Oh, you have an accent. I hear, oh, where are you from? American? Oh, I thought that was, so what are you doing here? Like, and then some people were asking me like, what is your heritage? And I was like, okay, well, why are you asking me that? Um, as opposed to getting in a right. cab in New York and the person's like on the phone and, and just wants you to like shut up and get out. You know what I mean? Um, right. So that was that was cool. I didn't necessarily have to adjust to that, but I did have to adjust my thinking to being like, why are they so nice right. to me? And just being like, my hello, someone's being nice to you. Just like engage in the conversation. And you'll be fine. <laughs> um, right. Did you get a lot of time off in Wales? No. No. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I was on set most every day, all day. There was a handful of like three day weekends, maybe two or three in the first like two months. Um, we did get a long weekend once and the, the cast and I, we all went to Pembrokeshire, which is like south of Wales on the, the, the coast. And we got an Airbnb and we walked around and ate pizza and like drank too much alcohol. That was really fun. That was super fun. Oh, a big thing I had to adjust to. I swear to God, the alcohol is stronger. Really? <laughs> I don't. I, 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 I think so. I, th- I don't know if the like percentage is higher or it's like I don't know what they got going on over there. But I was like knocked out almost Zooted. every time I yeah. had a drink. <laughs> that was an adjustment wasted. for sure. Yeah, wasted all the time, or whenever I could be. Um, <laughs> no, I worked most days though. Right. Wow. You are living a life of like, that's so cool. I don't know. It's so cool. I think it's so awesome. Oh, fan going. Thank you. Um, of course. I mean, I just, you know, it takes me back to the time when you were in San Francisco and you rubbed a potato on the, on the, on the, on your car for some reason. You Resources. said that. The yeah, wind, you said the- that rubbing a potato on your car would make it not, um, uh, what's the word? Foggy. 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 Yeah. 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 How yeah. were you guys in San Francisco together? Well. When was this? <laughs> <laughs> Both of us said, huh. well. <laughs> um, I think Carson and I road tripped up and you live yeah. nearby. I live, I live close. I live right? in San Jose, which is like mad close. So I think I probably just went up to meet you guys. And then we just like, you know, walked around the hay for a bit. And um, mm-hmm. San Francisco is mm-hmm. mad foggy. And I think I, the probably something on the car just like wouldn't unfog and of course my my mother her country ass was like get a potato rub it on the windshield there's like something in the (laughs) potato that will keep it from fogging up yeah and then you bought the um this doll this doll that's traveled with us now from from the time we met traveled with or haunted who who (laughs) really knows haunted where is she now i think i well this is a point of contention that we spoke about briefly is that we don't know because Myhala thought that Myhala had it, but then Myhala also thought that she gave it to Carson. But then I also think that I have it. So, you have it currently? Well, I think I did give it away <gasps> recently. Oh, recently? What? You I, think or you well, know? I was I was cleaning out my apartment because I uh, yeah. quarantine happened, and I I don't know. I just didn't know what to do with her and I thought she could I wasn't giving her a good home you know I wasn't like mm, feeding yeah, her right. and feeding her and yeah like she's a she was a baby like you have she was, you know she's kind of I wasn't taking care baby. of her properly yeah. yeah and so but what's strange now that I'm thinking about it is if we all think that we've had it or have it interesting did she duplicate like what is the Just magic the traveling pants, hmm. perhaps yeah. well i know that i had i took it from california to pittsburgh i know this for a fact because i drove my car with my mom and i vlogged about it and no one has seen these but i vlogged about it and she is this <laughs> this entity this doll has a huge role in the vlog she stayed on the dash <laughs> the whole time Oh, and where was, can we watch these vlogs? Uh, they they were on Facebook, and I deleted my Facebook, so they're gone forever, unfortunately. Right, right. Um, but they were really funny and really cute, and she was the star of them. So I'm pretty sure I brought it to <laughs> Pittsburgh, and then Carson was like, whisked her away. Oh yeah, I yeah I think Carson had her, and then but that's probably how you ended up with her because I don't know that like Carson. Gave I mean, it to me. Maybe yeah, because you had to have come and then I, to visit. Between I never came to visit. You never went to Carnegie Mellon? No? no, but he came to San Diego, surely, oh, okay. and brought the doll yeah. and then gave it to me. And I think I ended the curse or something. 
<laughs> Why do you think she was cut? No, I don't actually. Now that I'm thinking about it, maybe she was really helpful because you got an HBO role. Carson was on Broadway. <laughs> right. And maybe. maybe when you pass it, good luck comes. And I yes. messed it up. So I didn't pass it. Yes. So I. Um, you did pass. Well, where'd you. I gave it to like it? Goodwill or something. That's oh. passing it. Yeah, in a okay. way. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, she was definitely um, cursed. She was a witch. Not not a bad witch necessarily, but a no, witch. No, definitely a good witch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. like Hermione Granger ass witch, you know? Yes. Nice. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, my Hala, I love you. I think that you are amazing, as I keep saying. <laughs> Thank you for coming on Dating Straight. Where can the people find more of you? Uh, uh, so I will be in, if you haven't watched Industry yet, you can watch Industry on HBO and HBO Max. Um, I will. I am in a film called Plan B that's coming out this year that will be on Hulu. Um, if you want to go back a little bit, I'm in episode six of Modern Love, um, also on Hulu, I believe. And then I'm also in a film called Premature that's on Hulu for like five five seconds, maybe. Um, otherwise, <laughs> <laughs> you can catch me on the internet, on the gram. <laughs> I'll be around, you know. Awesome. Sweet. Thank you so much coming on Dating Straight. And thanks for listening. I'm Amy Odman. I'm Jack Dodge. And this is Dating Straight. See you next Tuesday. We can be a broken hearted lovers. You can help me recover. Ooh, we can be a broken hearted lovers.